Let's see. <clears throat> okay. We open up in prayer. Father, we bless you and we praise you. Thank you for your presence today through the person of the Holy Spirit. We're so grateful for this time and this opportunity to spend time around uh, the campfire of your word. Thank you for your spirit who's here to teach us and guide us into all truth. Thank you for your anointing that makes the difference within our lives. We give you praise, we give you honor and glory for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything you're going to do. We pray that you open up our minds and our understanding, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. So God, uh, it is our bold declaration that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we had a great time in the Lord uh, Sunday. Hopefully you were able to, uh, and everyone else was able to view uh, the recording. And um, we're still at 1234 uh, Magnolia. We are um, in contact with uh, Fort Dorchester High School. And we um, just, you know, keep pace with what they're doing. I, I think uh, right now, their kids are going to be virtual for two weeks, and there's a possibility they may open up the school. So we, we just keep our eyes on that. We're, I told them there's no rush. Um, you know, we, we're trying to be safe, and we're not trying to <laughs> necessarily be in a hurry. Right. And as uh, more people come, we had a first-time visitor um, on a Sunday uh, up in Ridgeville, and as more people come, we were just, you know, uh, socially distance, you know, put whatever precautions we'll need to put in place. Um, and just, you know, this is new for everybody. So we're just, we're just kind of taking it one, <laughs> one day at a time, one week at a time. Right. So we've been, uh, we're still, we're wrapping up the series about hope. And we said, um, especially in this day and age, it's important for us to, um, have hope. We define hope as a positive expectation of good. Hope is spiritual optimism. It is anticipation. And, um, you know, as, as believers, we ought to be people of faith, people of hope. Um, we should have a positive expectation because of uh, the God that we serve. Um, the gospel represents the good news to us. So, you know, for the child of God, I think there's always a silver lining um, in the clouds and, and you know, for us, uh, we should always uh, look and anticipate seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there's so many different verses that speak to the believer having a positive expectation. You know, some of the ones that come to mind are, you know, all things work together for the good of those that love God, and that are called, the called according to his purpose. You know, the Bible says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph, always causes us to win. You know, the Bible says that you know, the greater one lives on the inside of us. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. These are just popular verses, but they're all positive and they, they speak to what God will do in our lives when we're going through trying times. And that's, that's good news, at least for me. And we said the goal throughout the series is that we wanted to discover how we can have hope when oftentimes a life leaves us feeling hopeless or filled with misery, sorrow, and despair. And so that was our goal. Now, <clears throat> the thing I want to highlight is um, that word, uh, life. Obviously, we know life is, is, is hard. It presents Life presents all kinds of challenges uh, for us. And a lot of these challenges will rob you and, and leave you feeling hopeless. You'll be filled with misery, despair, um, sorrow. You would just literally be dejected. And you'll throw your hands in the air and just, you know, just wonder why you're, you're going through or experiencing some of the things you may be witnessing in your life. You know, in life, we deal with the loss of loved ones, you know, uh, people we have formed and developed long-time relationships with, uh, family members. You know, we lose them. That's especially hard. We've all been there. Uh, we have a domestic issue, divorce, separation, strained family relationships. Uh, we, we deal with illness, sickness, disease financial struggles. So life can be brutal. And um, if you're not careful, um, it can leave you feeling hopeless. Jesus never said we wouldn't ever have challenges in life. You know, the Bible says in the world, we will have tribulation. The Bible also says that uh, many, not some, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Bible says God will deliver us out of them all. And so, you know, life just comes with challenges, just comes with the territories, just it is what it is. But despite all this, we know God tells us to have hope, 
we have to hope in him. We have to hope in the word of God. We have to hope in, and expect him to um, essentially do what we can't do for ourselves. And so um, that's the reason why we can have that kind of expectation. So let me pose a couple of questions out here for you, some things we want to consider about having hope. So <clears throat> as in, if these are some things I see in the life of, of, of Christians. How do we get to the point where, hey, Brother Swinton, how's it going, man? I see you there. Hey, sir, how are you? All right, all right. I, uh, Sister Liz, you out there? Yes, how are you? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. So you playing on your computer for a little bit. I figure you get it together every once. Every so <laughs> I, I, I just ain't got to play with this thing. I tell you. <laughs> so you know, we, we're talking about some of the challenges we go through in life. How we can maintain our hope in God and our confidence and expectation in what God can do in and through us. How do we get to the point where we can separate the challenges of life? and the faithfulness of God. What I mean by that is, how do we get to the point that we can say with confidence, no matter what happens in life, I know God is still good. I know God is still going to be faithful. How do we arrive at that point? We can really separate the two. The challenges we go through and the fact that we know without a shadow of a doubt that God is faithful no matter what. How do we get to that point in your mind? Very loaded question, eh? Yes. Well, I think if you have been through some of life experiences that you mentioned this before, um, I think that's one way that you build your faith in God because um, from what he has brought you out and what he has brought you through, and I don't I don't, I can't think of any other way of, I mean, you know, when he bring you out of something that you just, you know, you could have just given up or whatever, but you just see the faithfulness of the, of God and you know that he is, you know, he's still on the throne and he hear your cry and he will never let you down. And I think that that's, you know, that's what I think. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's, from my experiences in life, you know, some things that I've been through and what God has brought me through, it helps me to maintain my faith, maintain my hope in him. Absolutely. Our experiences really provide themselves as proof, evidence of what God can do that, you know, no matter what happens, God is faithful. We still can have hope. Any, any thoughts there, brothers, when how we can separate the challenges we go through with the with God's faithfulness and then whereby we can still have hope. I think I would say this by his blessings upon our lives because in my case in point is about that is, uh, I, you know, I take my wife because she went through a lot, you know, with her uh, cancer and everything. And, you know, her mom, you know, she, she passed at an early age and it was bad for her. And, you know, she tell me she had memories of that. So I look at her and I say, well, she's God's, walking, breathing, miracle, his word in the flesh, because, you know, praise God, she's been healed now for 16 years plus, and, awesome. and during the time that, uh, uh, you know, she was with her, and I was with her from day one, from the, from, from the moment she found out to the second, and I see God's work in her, and his, his miracle in her life, and I say, you know, God is, is he's real, you know, and, and our experience, my experiences over time that, that right there builds strength in me, builds strength in, in, in when I minister to other people or give them a word or what have you. I can say God is real. His word is true. Don't, there's no need to ever doubt that no matter how dark the morning seems or how dark the night seems, you know, joy and peace comes in the morning time. And if you stand on God's word, it, it might look bleak, but it's going to come through. So that's the first thing I would say. And the second thing I would say is that of course, staying in this word, and, and I would say, jump on uh, Sister Liz's comment as well, what, what we've been through, this word and, and what we see. Everybody's looking for, you know, something big to fall out of the sky and stuff. It's not quite, God is not like that. Yes, he might work that in certain situations, but for me and for 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 my life, for our lives, he, he works in, in, in small ways, but 
if you look at they're very powerful and for him to heal her and 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 to uh, to keep her you know because you hear so many horrible horrible stories about cancer and he brought me out of because i'm gonna tell you pastor uh sister Lid, i cried a lot of mornings a lot of mornings but i was strengthened to his word because he said that you know this is this is this is the purpose. This is your purpose in her life. And many times she, you know, we talked about, I said, well, you know, why me? And I said, well, God's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for us. He's got a plan for our family to show that his word and his truth is real. And there's never any doubt that you should have or any fear that you should have because you know that his word is true and it would not come back to him more. So those are two things that I would say is to you know have that belief and see it, see it in the flesh and see it in in um, the way he changes the situation. The, the only thing that you can come out and say, it was not of this world. It had to be God. It had to be uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because man is not able. He's not possible. Oh, he can't do that. And I stop. No, absolutely. <laughs> I, you know, I think both of you, I again hit on this. Is you know the experience we have, and I think that's one reason why. Um, we have to realize no man is an island. This is why we need each other because we can hear each other's experiences, our, our testimonies. I think that's why one of the uh, things Satan tries to do to um, children of God and people in particular, to um, especially when we're feeling down and we're feeling hopeless and we're filled with sorrow and despair, he wants to isolate us. Um, and he doesn't want us to be around other believers who can encourage us in our faith and, and who we can gain or pull inspiration from because Every time we think about what God has done in our lives or when we see God doing something in other people's lives, it allows us to continue to have hope and have an expectation that, hey, if God did it for this person, and I know he's no respecter of persons, he can do it for me as well. And so we, we have to, you know, I've heard people say things about, you know, write down a prayer journal and, and you know, um, so you can document what God does for you. But, you know, thank God, you know, that's that's one reason, one purpose our memory serves. We can always think right. about it. That's one thing the saints would always sing, if I can just think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries Amen. out, hallelujah, Amen. thank you, Lord, for saving me. You know, I, they would always say, you know, if, if, if you know what I went through, you would understand, well, I praise God the way I do, because yes. we just think about how faithful God has been. In addition to that, I, I do think, you know, sometimes we, we don't have the right kind of understanding because, and, and this is something I try to eradicate just as a teacher in the body of Christ, is a lot of times we attribute our problems to God trying to, you know, get some greater glory out of our lives, or maybe he's sending problems to teach us some greater lesson. And you'd be surprised some preachers even teach that. I, I've come to realize that some things we go through in life, God had nothing to do with it. It's just the virtue of, of living. You know, the, it's just mm -hmm. life presents challenges. We live in an imperfect world. We do have a real devil, by the way, we deal with. And, um, you know, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. And I could I would argue that anything that's imperfect or anything um, that doesn't come from God, I can say that it's a result of sin and Satan. And I give you some scriptural examples of this. And we, we talked about this before. If you remember, um, the disciples came to Jesus and there was a, a, actually a parent of a child who was born blind. And immediately the disciples were like a lot of Christians today. They wanted to know whose fault was it that the boy was born blind? Mm. <laughs> Like, really? And the disciples, I mean, they're, they're protégés of Jesus. They're like, who sinned? Did the boy sin or did the parents sin? Jesus, and, and it's amazing, Jesus didn't even answer them their specific question because he was trying to let them know nobody sinned. Like, they didn't do anything to bring this on them. It just happens as a result. You know, we lived in a perfect world, but sin came into the world. So now we live in an imperfect world. Things happened, you know? And so Jesus, he said, no, nobody sinned, but now he's going to have an opportunity to be healed and God is going to get glory out of his life. But God didn't make that boy that way. Also, we saw this in the life of Job. His friends were, you know, blaming him for his problems, but they didn't have, or they weren't privy to what we were able to do, which we can read in the book in Job chapter one and two. And we see that Satan orchestrated the entire thing. So we have to get out of this idea that if I'm going through something, God is doing this to bring about some greater glory or God is sending this problem, even the pandemic, you know, you know, what is God doing? I, I mean, we've, we've dealt with pandemics before. You have Ebola, the swine flu, all these things. Can God get glory out of our 
trials and, and tests in life? Absolutely. Can they build our faith? Absolutely. Can it pr uh, produce a perseverance and, and spiritual stamina? Absolutely. But um, to say that God sent it for that very reason, I question that. And uh, so we have to realize and we have to uh, separate our challenges from who we know God to be. No matter what we go through, God is still faithful. He is still able. He's still willing to do it great things in our lives, and we can't allow our circumstances to change what we know about God, you know? Amen. And sometimes we're blinded by our own pain, and, and let's face it, when we're, when we're going through challenges, we, we're not all thinking straight, so we, we, we're just pulling answers out of our head, trying to, you know, get some reasoning and, 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 and understanding about all this, but um, we have to stick with what the Word says, Amen. and um that no matter what we go through, God is faithful. And he's able to deliver us. He's able to heal us. He's able to provide for us no matter what we may face in life. And so I think that's, that's important to realize. What, what, is, what are some things that God does to, um, to give us? Or what are some things he does in our lives to give us? Hope? Not, and I, you know, some of you already talked about some things, but in addition to testimonies that we hear, are they, can you think of any other things God does in our lives to ensure that, that we have hope? even in the most hopeless situations? I think just waking up in the morning, just <laughs> touching us with his hands of mercy in the morning, you know, that's enough to give you hope. Yes, ma'am. Sister Mixon, how's it going? I see you have your hand raised there. Good. I couldn't find the, the unmute button, so. Yeah. No, I, would, I, had to, uh, <laughs> I had to give you access. Sorry about that. I just noticed it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, I remember when, I guess in my mindset, I was in a down place or, you know, looking at things negatively. So just when I, like, when I went out and about in my regular day and somebody opened the door or somebody was, you know, said something nice or unexpected, um, kind words and things like that that was you know because we do god's work i saw that as him in the land of the living because it was at a time when i needed needed to hear you know positive things so i think that's something that he does he puts people in the right place at the right time to say the right things absolutely sister liz tell me what would you say again i'm trying to tie all these together what i, I want to what did you say I said, just by God waking us up in the morning, that's, that's enough to give you hope, you know. Right, absolutely. In any hopeless situation, you know, you got life, you know, many have been gone, you know, and you still have life, you're here, you know, in spite of oh. whatever you have done, God has forgiven you and he still give you another chance, you know. So that's a, that's a blessing right there. Yes, yes, there's just, you know, we can't overlook those, you know, those things. And, and even uh, Sister Mix, I would agree, a lot of times it is refreshing um, when uh, God puts people in our lives. And, and let's face it, God does use people without a shadow of a doubt. He does work through people. Uh, Satan really? uses people too, <laughs> but, but God doesn't. You know, Satan always provides a counterfeit. But um, we, we do have to realize that's one of the ways God works is through others. I mean, that's the whole purpose behind having ministry gifts. You know, um, God ministered to Israel, even when uh, he, the Hebrews, the children of Israel were in Egyptian bondage, you know, God sent a man, he person, you know, God sent Moses to, to um, you know, give them hope and to revive their spirits. And so, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes when, you know, someone gives us an encouraging word, uh, uh, someone does a kind act for us and toward us, it absolutely gives us hope. It, it gives us you know, um, confidence that, hey, you know, things aren't, aren't as bad as, as they seem. So, um, you know, one of the things I thought about is, is um, you know, it really ties into, you know, the last comment is um, his, his word. A lot of people don't realize sometimes we look for God to write it in the clouds or we look for God to speak to us in an audible voice. One of the best ways God uh, encourages us and gives us hope is through his word, you know, it's through his word, you know, whether we're reading it or meditating on the word or, um, the preach word, you know, I don't, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I don't know how many times you all been in this situation. Now, sometimes I'm on the giving end of this, you all on the receiving end, but I wasn't always in the pulpit, but how many of you had experiences where you were going through something, then 
you, you had the presence of mind to go to church. You, you did the right thing so you can hear a word from God. And it seemed like you may have been the only person in that church. It seemed like that message was tailor-made for you. I, I can remember it. I was going to share this at the end. I was at a low point in my life, one of the lowest moments of my life. And I remember um, driving in the car, and I had it on a Christian radio station. And it's like the words that that preacher said, it was so, for me, it just, it, it it's like he would have never known the words resonated with me. And it's, 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 it was exactly what I needed to hear. And um, I think we can never underestimate the value that God's word brings to our lives, how it can lift our spirits, how it can change our perspective, how it can lift us up when we're down. Um, you know, again, the Bible does says faith come by hearing. That's why when we are in these dark places and moments in life, it is imperative that we hear the word of God, whether it's, you know, someone singing the word or preaching the word, or if we're meditating and, and speaking God's word to ourselves, we can never underestimate, undervalue the significance. And not only that, the, the, the supernatural power that is in every word from God. The Bible says that the word of God can build us up, give us an inheritance among those that are sanctified. So I think we, we have to realize, you know, that's probably, I would argue, the primary way that God gives us hope is through the scriptures, through the word of God. And before we get out of here, I'm going to give you a verse that um, that absolutely proves that point. Any other comments there? And I'm going to ask you all a couple other things as well. So let's, let's talk about this. Um, we would all agree sometimes people can present challenges in all of our lives. Why, why do we at times allow people to cause us to lose hope in God. Why, why, why do we do that? Why do we allow people to cause us to not believe that God is gonna do great things in our lives? Why, why does that happen, do you think? I think it's, 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 it's common. <laughs> we, we, we allow people to change our perception and view of God. How does that happen? Why do we allow that to happen? I think it's difficult. It's, it's a difficult position to be in when you're um, trying to exercise faith for something that you've never seen and you talking to people that you trust or people that you can see. And I guess sometimes we kind of value um, what we see based on their role or position in our lives, but it's kind of hard to, I mean, in, in general, just to walk by faith, but especially when you really are desperate and then you're confronted with opposition, it, it's kind of like contradictory because it's something you can't see versus something or someone you can't. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Anybody else? People. It, that's, <laughs> no doubt. I mean, the Bible says that people... People can be one of our biggest challenges. Anybody have thoughts why we allow people to cause us to lose hope in God? Sometimes we can get with the, you know, the wrong group of people. That's why I always say is you got to choose your company wisely. You got to choose your friends wisely. Because just sometimes people can um, say there's like people got power in their words, some people, and they will try to convince you to they, you know, to the way they think versus the way you think, um, no matter what, you know. That's why we have to main, try to maintain our faith and maintain our confidence in God. But I always say, you know, um, you just have to learn how to connect yourself with um, the right people because you know everybody is not your friend everybody not gonna say the right thing sometime and if you're not a strong person or a strong believer sometimes you know person can sway you the wrong you know the wrong way or in the wrong direction or the wrong way of thinking absolutely absolutely choose your company wise any thoughts there brother swinton I would say for Sister Mixon and Sister Liz, I want to add, and you could, she could, they could have touched on this, relationships too, because 
if you want to maintain a good relationship in family with 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 whoever it might be, um, you have to be very careful with that because it it can be it can be a um, what is it like a rudder because you say oh you know I you know I don't I don't I want to listen to what this person says but I don't want to hurt him I don't want to do this so I think relationship uh, and to me is one of the, a big thing too and then leading that on to uh, maintain our faith and we have to stand stand firm so I hope I'm making sense because yeah I listen to what you say but as it relates to our relationship or as it relates to faith but I have to stand firm on my faith and the faith that I have in Christ Jesus because it's, it's proven it's, it's, it's always proven whether it comes when it comes or how it comes it's always proven it's, it's never a, like to say a false narrative um, it's, it's always true and yeah they're going to be situation and relationship and people that I would say that they would try to challenge that and I think for me I, I see the, the challenges that we as Christians go through on a daily basis against I don't know the secular world if that makes sense because they cha they challenge us all the time you know the way we act the way we talk the what we believe the, the whole the I know the whole uh, gamut of, of things that the world is caught up in right now and has been caught and will probably will be caught up in versus uh, us standing f firm and standing strong. So a relationship I think is, 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 is a biggie. Just like the, the wife told Joel and say, well, you know, why don't you just curse her? God to die. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm telling listen, it, it, this, this thing is, is, is a challenge. You know, I, I'll piggyback off what Sister Mixon said because Here's the thing, we're relating to a God we cannot see, but we always are interacting with people we can see. I can argue that it's easier to relate to people than it is to God just because it's going to take an element of faith. God is invisible. Uh, so that, that can be a challenge in itself. And one of the things I found is that a lot of believers, this, this happens more times than not, they lose hope in God because in human relationships, we get hurt. We get yeah. hurt and yes. it, it causes us to be devastated and yes. because it's emotionally overwhelming it has a negative impact on our faith and so uh it's a challenge because the whole idea of being in a, a relationship with someone it does require a certain level of vulnerability and which leaves you open to be hurt so but one thing i saw with jesus and his relationships it's amazing because he never in all of his relationships I'm not saying he was distant because I don't think ever anyone ever felt that they were on love when they left his presence. But one that he was, that I think is abundantly clear in scripture, he never allowed anyone to get too close to him to take God's place in his life. In other words, it was crystal clear that his number one relationship he fostered was his relationship with the father. Yeah. That was abundantly clear. I don't care if you were in the original 12, if you, if you tried to touch that relationship, he will check you in a heartbeat. You remember Peter and all the other disciples, you know, he was getting ready to go to the cross and, and disciples like, no, God, you can't do that. And he said, no, 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 get behind me, Satan, you know. And he, he called them out. He, he literally called them out. There were times he, he got away from the disciples. He said, I'm going away to pray. No matter how close he was to people, no matter how intimate he was with, in his circles, in his, in his circle, in his relationship, he did not allow anyone to get in and I think sometimes we, we have to realize that that no matter how close we get to people, nobody will be able to take God's place. And if we allow people to do that, I think we, we open ourselves up to be hurt really bad, you know? Um, and, and, and we have to keep that in mind. And when that happens, there's a lot of people, because how many times have you seen this? People are, um, they, they get hurt in a relationship and then all of a sudden they quit coming to church, they quit praying. It's like they take it out on God, but it's the people who who created the damage, you know? And yes. so we have to make sure that primarily God, you know, I, I take care of that relationship first. And, and, and first, and everyone else is going to have to find their own place, you know? Um, that has to be, um, that has to take precedent 
over everything. In addition to that, I think um, you see this a lot with um, people who look up to, you know, men or women of clergy or, or even people who were, uh, we looked up to a uh, church mother, deacon. And I think sometimes, especially the church in America, and in recent years, we have celebrity preachers and pastors. I think we put people on a pedestal too much. And then, and I think we have a, we, we, we erroneously admire people too much rather than admiring their traits and their attributes, uh, admiring people's faith, their integrity, their, their ethics. And I think we just admire them. Um, and I think that if we're not careful, especially if they fall, it can cause us to not have hope in God because they're like, oh my God, if, if they fail, then I, there's no hope for me. <laughs> you know, so we just, we gotta be very careful with these relationships. I mean, again, Jesus, he, he gave us the perfect model. He, he was very intentional with his relationships, I mean, he, I mean, you had to qualify to be in his presence. And even when you were in his inner circle, if you went off, he would check you in a heartbeat. So we just, we, we got to be careful about that because too many people I see in the church, they leave the church, they leave God altogether just because of being wounded in relationship. And let me tell you, even in the ministry, it's the same way. I mean, um, you, you see, you know, other uh, pastors, ministers of the gospel, and you, you think they should be acting better or living better. And, and that's why you have some preachers, they lose their faith because they, they, they see all the things that go on behind the scenes in ministry and how supposedly men and women of God, how some of them act. And it just, it, it crushes their spirit. And so we, we have to just have some balance behind our relationships. And, and um, we got to realize that, you know, the, the number one relationship, God is the only person we got to please. At the end of the day, when we take care of that relationship, all our other relationships, and, the, and when they're secondary, they'll kind of fall uh, in place where they need to be. So um, I think we probably can talk all day about that if we wanted to, because it's just something we got to keep in mind. One of my ver favorite verses, and I'll say this and not move on, and, and I've said this before, Paul, he was writing to one of the letters to the church, and he told him, he said, you ran well, who hindered you from obeying the truth? And again, to me, it always caught my attention. He never said what hindered you from obeying the truth he said who did it who do you allow in your inner circle your in your personal <laughs> space that caused you to lose track sometimes offense hurt just to the list like you said hanging around with the wrong people Bible says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump bad company corrupt good character we, we this relationship piece is critical we got to be careful about who we allow in our lives um we, we definitely have to be intentional because it affects how we view and, and how we relate to God. What are the, this, this may be a hard question here, <laughs> but uh, what are some things in today's world looking at society? And I know we highlight some of the negative things in our world today, especially in the States and today's culture. In your mind, what are some things in today's world that gives you a reason to have hope? Can you think of any? <laughs> What are, what are some things in today's <laughs> world? <laughs> kind of <hard. laughs> I know we're, we're in the middle of a, a, a crazy year, <laughs> to say the least. Can you think of some things just looking at our world today that gives you a reason to have hope? Let me give, give y'all some time on this one. <laughs> I think it's the same thing, relationships, because... They, they can work for you and they can work against you. Yes, Lord. Um, when you think about your children, that gives you hope, you know, or the people that um, look at you positively or people who look up to you, that gives you hope. Um, and you're right, there aren't a whole lot of things, but <laughs> that that's one thing that I think of is children in general and um, and in particular, my this this relationship piece can work both ways. Really, it can it can cause you to lose hope, but the right people in your life um, can cause you to abound in hope and abound in faith. So, absolutely. Any any other thoughts? Some things in today's world that gives you a reason to have hope. Well, I think you'll, you know, being close to your family members, you know, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have y'all in my life and <laughs> right. the things y'all do for me on a daily basis. <laughs> and like I say, just, just being alive, you know, that, that's just one thing that gives me hope because 
every day is a new day, no matter what's going on. It's, it's a new day for me. And it gives me a chance to do things, you know, different things, no matter what, because I know that, you know, God is still in control and he knows all about it, you know, so why sh that that's, I don't know how to put it, but that's just enough to give you hope. You know, you got the, he looks beyond our faults and he sees our every need. And having positive people in your life, you know, somebody that you can talk to, somebody that you trust, you know, somebody that you know will say a word of prayer with you or pray, pray for you. All that, you know, to me that, that gives me hope, you know, and like I say, the greatest hope is being being alive, you know, to see each and every day. Each and every day is a new day, a new beginning, you know. Many uh, desire that chance, but they didn't have it, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback on what both of y'all said. I'll give you a chance, Brother Swin. We, we have to acknowledge, even those who may be viewing right now uh, after the fact or live, we have to realize that relationships matter. It absolutely matters. Who you surround yourself with, it matters. I'll go farther than that to say where you go to church matters. Who you connect with, who you allow to speak into your life. Relationships absolutely can get you off track and rob you of your faith. But the right relationships, the right company and association can do a world of good for your <laughs> expectation, your hope, and your confidence in God. Think about this now. The Bible says Elisha, the protege of the man of God, the apostle, the prophet Elijah. The Bible said Elisha, hang around the man of God. The Bible says there was a double portion of his spirit was on him. In other words, the anointing, the power of God doubled in his life just because of who he was around, you know? So like when we're in these dark places, these dark moments, and you know, when we feel hopeless, filled with despair, we have to make sure we're connecting ourselves with people of like precious faith. I'll tell you, of all the things that have gone on that have left me discouraged, it has been equally refreshing to uh, connect with uh, men, women of God, other believers who are living for God, people who, you know, when I, I think sometimes that our, our nation has lost its moral compass to connect with people who are ethical, have integrity, you know, who are living their life above reproach, doing who purposely to purpose to do things above board. It is refreshing. I mean, you know, we, we, we we're in election year. I mean, all the politicians, they sometimes they lie to you and everything. I mean, it's just, I, and on both sides, you know, sometimes Democrat, Republican, independent, whatever. And, and you know, sometimes even in the church, you, you meet unscrupulous people. So you, to connect with people who can inspire your faith and your hope in God, it is so refreshing. And we have to, you know, make sure we're connected with the right people, especially during times where our faith is weak. So um, one thing I was going to say, and it, it really highlights what both of y'all said, you know, this past week, actually, I was talking to a, a brother of mine at church and I've known for years. I said his name, you would know him. He, he was telling me about some things God was doing in his life. And he was just sharing his testimonies, you know, um, you know, what God was doing. And, and again, we're, we're in a, a, a dark period in history to hear that God was still like blessing people. And, and what God had been doing in someone else's life, it's encouraging, you know, uh, you know, people who are doing well in God, in Christ, it's encouraging. And so just hearing that alone, I believe these are things that that we can extract out of today's world that can give us a reason for hope. Any thoughts you had too, Brother uh, Swin? I want to give you an opportunity as well. well. I think you guys covered it on this one. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's amazing. I was talking to Carol because she was saying that um, even the company she worked for, the real estate company, because you, you hear a lot of doom and gloom, especially on the, in the media. And um, she was telling me the other day that, um, and I, I shared this at church, you know, her real estate company, like they're hitting record numbers. Like they've never seen it before. Like, again, we have like 40 million people out of work right now, but you have some people who are actually doing very well. <laughs> you know, they, they, he said they're breaking records. I was, I was talking, first I was talking about actually, I, I was talking to brother Mark. He said, man, they have an awesome money. He said, man, they're, they're, they're hitting all their goals. It's just amazing. And in the, in the, you hear so, many, so much negativity. And so when you hear 
about success, successful, successful others. Um, even those of some of my brothers in ministry who they're still doing ministry. I mean, they, they, they went all virtual and they're still proclaiming the gospel. They're still getting people saved. They're still getting people healed and filled with the spirit. And in the church, they're, they're widening their reach. They're still connecting to hundreds and thousands, you know, albeit via media ministry. Like it's just encouraging, you know, in the midst of the most dark times, God still does awesome things. And so those are some things we can still you know, uh, highlight and, and, and amplify in today's world to, to give us hope as well. I'll give this final question here. Uh, do you think hopelessness is a sin? When, when we allow sorrow and misery, you know, to remain in our life, do you, do you think that's a sin? Why, why not? I don't know if it's a sin. I, that's a, that's a kind of hard one. Take a stab at that, you know, allowing sorrow, misery to, to remain in your life. Is that a sin? I mean, it does show a lack of trust. It does show a lack of faith in God, you know, and it does show a lack of hope in him. And I'm sure he would want you to cast all your cares upon him and take your burdens to him and leave it there. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a sin. I can't say that. I'll let somebody else tackle that one. I think it, I would say, um, oh. go ahead, Sister Mix. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I don't think it is. I think it's the difference between being um, human and being godlike, per se. Um, and I, I'm thinking of scriptures, but I know I don't know all of the words in it. And the, one, the ones that came to my mind was, there's one about the heart. When, um, when your heart is, um, is dis dis disappointed, and it's a psalm. And, and it was something to the effect that when your hope was deferred or something like that, you depend on God in a different way. Yeah. Um, so I, I think he expects that from us. I just don't think he expects for us to be there long. You know, he expects for us to get back up. He expects for us to encourage each other. He expects for us to grow from it. And so that's what I think makes a difference between, especially when you see a Christian or someone who, because like you said, we we place these expectations on people. Yeah. And when you see them down, you get a different perspective of them. But when they're down and then they come back up, it's very encouraging yeah. um, to see them overcome whatever it was. Somebody that's, that people, I mean, because everybody has a different perception of somebody else. So you see somebody who you, um, perceive as being strong actually come down and then from from their experience with God or the way God brought them out whether they get what they wanted or not you know to get back to the place where they were or to grow from it right. is very encouraging to onlookers or people who are not in the church right. you know so I think I I don't I think he expects us to get down. I I just don't think he expects us to stay down, stay hope, stay in a hopeless mindset. Any thoughts there, Brother Swinton? That's good. Yeah. Is hopelessness a sin? Um, I would I would say yes because and and I relate back to the Book of Matthew where God teaches us not to worry. So I don't know if I can relate that together. But if you're going to worry and you say, oh, how am, I, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to pay that? And there's no hope. I never get a job. I never get this. And, and, and you'd be worried. Hopelessness is, that means that you, for me, it just means that you just, you just throwing, it, throwing in the tower, so to speak, because everything is lost. You, you, you have that mindset and you have the attitude that everything is lost and nothing will, 
nothing will come out of it. It, it. it won't be a sunshiny day tomorrow. It's going to be another dull day, or another horrible day, and, and there's no hope for me. Why? Why should I commit? Why should I stay on the, the straight and narrow road? And for me, it relates back to being worried because if you're worried, you you there's no hope. You worry about what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this relationship? How am I going to to stay firm? And I, I don't know. I hope I'm not rambling, but for me, that's that's what I believe that it, it's, it, it's the same when it comes to that particular part. Okay, I'll say two things. I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. I, I made the uh, reference about politicians, they all lie. I won't put that out there. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that up for debate. And I, I, I can't broad brush every politician that way is saying that they're lying as, as something to highlight negativity in our world. But I will say this uh, concerning uh, hopelessness being a sin. I think I'm going to agree with everyone, if I can, uh, who made a comment. Because um, I thought about a couple things. First of all, the, the verses you quoted all are accurate, you know, especially starting with Sister Liz about, you know, the Bible it talks about, you know, having us faith, you know, uh, Brother Swinton, you, the, the scripture you referenced about, you know, being worried about what we're going to eat, drink, and wear. Jesus later went on to say, why do you do this, O you of little faith? The Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin. The Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing. Um, so obviously, you know, remaining in a state of despair and misery will not do things to help our faith. It will uh, take away from our faith. That being said, we are human, you know. Uh, we all go through things. Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was taking on the sin of the entire the world, the Bible said his soul was exceedingly sorrowful um, to the point of death. That's how low he was at that moment. Um, do we arrive at moments in our lives where we feel uh, just spiritually and naturally drained? Absolutely. You wouldn't be human if you didn't go through that. Um, and I'll piggyback on what Sister Mixon said as well. That said, um, I don't believe God wants us to stay there. Um, because if we remain there, um, again, it'll rob us of our faith. The Bible does say that worry uh, is a sin. Now, we, we think about sin as, you know, lying, cheating, stealing, and, you know, um, you know all these things that are visible. But again, the Bible says whatever is not of faith, anything that can take away from our faith, we have to consider it something that we have to resist. And so we all find ourselves in low points in our lives, but at a certain point, God does, I believe, expect us to rise up in faith. You know, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, not once, twice, three times, <laughs> seven times a righteous man falls, but he gets right back up again. You know, we may endure for a night, okay? <laughs> We've all been there, but by faith, we can have an expectation that joy will come in the morning. If Jesus was sorrowful, we may find ourselves in that place too. The Bible says after Jesus was in that low place, he prayed to God. He got on his face before God. He cried out to the Lord. The Bible says God came and strengthened him. He sent angels to minister to him. He eventually was able to go to the cross. He did what God told him to do, and so it is with all of us as well. We will come through and experience low points in our lives. That does not mean at the end of the day, we have to lose our hope and confidence in God. God expects us to rise up. He wants us to become in strong in faith um, no matter what we're going through. So that's good. So I, I think in some instances, remaining sorrowful, we have to treat that as a sin, something that we can't continue to remain in our lives. Let me give you a scripture here. I'll see if I can uh, post a quote. I don't know if it's going to allow me to do it to share, but uh, there is a verse we have talked about how the Bible is the primary source to help us build hope. Um, there's a scripture in Romans 15, 4. I just quoted it for you. And it says, uh, whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. We have to agree that the word of God will always give us hope. And, and I think that's, that's probably the main reason why Satan tries to keep people home from church. You know, keeping us not connecting with other believers. I do realize right now, in some instances, it may not be safe for people to get out. I get that. I'm not talking about that. But, you know, uh, and, and obviously, to, to, to touch on that, you know, I know across the country in, uh, in the body of Christ, there are a lot of Christians, pastors in particular, who uh, are arguing with, with uh, you know, uh, officials and governors and those who um, create laws 
about some of the bans on churches and churches not being fully open. I think a lot of pastors are doing an excellent job um, streaming the word, you know, through, uh, you know, online, you know, uh, video technology. I, I, I'm not saying it takes the place of it, but I think it still provides us a means to connect and to hear the word. Again, the Bible just said we have to hear the word of God. So I commend those pastors for doing that. And I would argue that um, if we have to do this for a season, there's, there's no problem. There's, there's no issue. I understand the value behind fellowship, but as long as we can connect and thank God through technology, we can, as long as we can um, a fellowship, relate, as long as we can hear the word consistently, as long as we're faithful to attend, you know, our online services, I, I believe our faith can still thrive. You know, I, I'm not saying that we don't have to argue to open up churches again, but listen, while they're closed, we can still build our faith. We can still hear the word. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's, you know, we can, you know, waste time fighting other things. That's just my opinion. Um, but the Bible says in this verse that the scriptures give us hope. Hearing the word gives us hope. You know, reading, meditating on the word, hearing the preach word, the word proclaimed, it builds our faith up uh, in the most trying times. And, and that's what we have to, to understand. Let me give you, uh, see if I can uh, share something here. Uh, it might not allow me to, but if not, I can just quote uh, the verse for you. There's actually a quote I want to give you here, a quote. I had it up on a, a, a real pretty uh, uh, screen, but I was, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get fancy now, I guess, with, uh, oh, not going to do that. I'm trying to get fancy with uh, technology. So I better, I better not uh, try to show off too. Oh, here it is. I think I can actually do it. Um, uh, maybe not. Okay, so I won't, I won't do it. So um, I'll just quote it for you. It says, um, they say, here, here this now. It says, they say a person just needs three things in the world to truly be happy. Okay? A person only needs three things in the world to be happy. Number one, someone to love. Number two, something to do. And number three, something to hope for. Someone to love, something to do something to hope for. Now, what was interesting to me is God can check all of those off for us because we absolutely, now we, 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 we agreed, I think we agreed that of all our relationships, we need to first love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. No one else can take his place. And I'm telling you, if we allow people, I don't care who it is, husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, father, we allow someone else in God's place. We're opening ourselves up to be let down. We're opening ourselves. We're opening ourselves up to be hurt. We need someone to love. I would argue, and I would suggest that person we need to love primarily, not to say we don't love anybody else, is Almighty God. This is what we need to be happy. We need something to do. Whatever God tells us to do, you know, we we do have. By the way, we do have a cause to live for. Um, we do, we hear on assignment. We, we have a cause that's greater than self and something, or in this, our case, someone to hope for or something we can hope for. That is God. That is his word. And, and at the end of the day, by this quote, that's what will really make us happy in life. That's, that is what will cause us to have joy unspeakable, full of glory. That is what will allow us to have this kind of expectation to be spiritually optimistic and, and always believing and anticipating God to do awesome things within our lives. And that's what hope does, especially for the child of God. Any questions or comments you all have, and then we'll take prayer requests and praise reports. I appreciate all you all's input and feedback. All right. All right. Let's see. There you go, Sister Mixon. That's the one I was thinking about. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled as a tree of life. Of yeah. Life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. I couldn't remember the exact words, but that's what I was thinking. Well, I want to add, absolutely. You know, here's the thing. Hope, does, uh, well, being these periods of hopelessness, um, it does, it, or it could potentially bring out the best 
in our faith, our character, all kind of things. So yeah, I, I agree. It's a part of life. We all go through it. And um, obviously it can produce something greater in our lives as well. But yeah, that was, a ver I thought about that verse. I just didn't know that was one you were uh, referring to though. But thank you for putting that in chat bar. You can have the questions, comments, prayer requests, and praise reports. I, um, I yes. Have a prayer request. My um, dad's son is having a hard time. Not exactly sure what's going on or why, but the evidence thereof, he's just having a hard time to use the prayer. We'll do we pray for him before we leave here. Um, some of y'all know Brother Fred. He called me one of his, uh, I won't say who exactly, but had someone in his family just passed away uh, from the coronavirus. We want to keep that family lifted, lifted in prayer as well. Um, some of us have had people affected, you know, by that or other things. Um, so he, he did reach out to me and experienced, told me he had experienced some death in his family. So we will we'll lift up uh, the Cavanagh's family as they grieve as well. But Father, we bless you. Thank you for everything that has been said and done. We thank you for Sister Mixon, the Father's son. We lift him up in prayer, Lord. We stand in agreement with the intercessors that are around him, praying for him, lifting him up. Lord, you know what he's going through. You know exactly what he needs. We're praying that you surround him with the right people, speak to him directly or through others who are in his circle of influence. God, I'm praying for him, his soul salvation, with the spirit remains strong. We pray for his mind as well, Lord. Lord, that you said you won't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And so, Father, we're praying for the mental state, uh, whatever he may be battling or uh, the challenges that he's facing, that he will be able to overcome them by faith. And so we lift up that entire family. Pray for the Cavendish family right now in the name of Jesus as they grieve. Lord, strengthen that family, Lord. Help them throughout this process. Lord, you are the spirit of comfort. Comfort them, Lord, throughout this hard time that they're going through, Lord. Let them know that you'll be right with them every step of the way. And Father, for those who are also dealing with similar challenges, we're praying for their health and their healing in the name of Jesus. We know this is your will. We know your power is able to do so. So God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We maintain our confidence. We maintain our hope and expectation in you. And Father, we're full of faith. We're full of belief. We know you're going to do exactly what you have told us you would do in your word you absolutely watch over your word to perform it in our lives so god we give you praise we give you the honor and glory for all these things in jesus name we pray thank you. amen amen and amen all right amen. thank you all for staying uh connecting with us and remaining connected listen i'm, I'm a you know some may disagree you know but um I thank God for, for what we're doing. I mean, I'm, I mean, yeah. we can either do one or two things with, in, in terms of ministry. We can cry over spilled milk and whine and complain or just just um, keep rolling, keep moving. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know just, just, you know, uh, you know, this virtual service for a while. Hey, we, we, we got to do it as long as we can keep hearing the word and, and staying connected. And, um, you know, we'll we'll get back when at the time we'll, we all know when the time is right. So I, I appreciate y'all's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Um, they say, I, I put out there, I know people may be listening, they say only 20% of, I mean, we, we, churches are doing a great job, by the way. I, I think they're to be commended. Uh, some churches are doing a stellar job of media ministry. They say only 20% of the members actually listen and they connect. So I commend you, you all, for, for being faithful to do so. And um, I think uh, as we attend in-person or uh, virtual services, our faith will still thrive. Our faith will still remain strong, and we can still grow in the things of God and, 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 and be safe and, and um, make sure we're adhering to safety protocol as well. So thank you all for your faithfulness. You all have a blessed rest of the week, and uh, we're standing in faith for those who have prayer requests, and uh, we're believing God God is going to do some awesome things in their lives. All right, I'll stop now. I get long-winded when I get excited. So y'all be blessed, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Take care. All right.